So this is a really quick video to show how you can add late estimation to WebXR. And so previously we had done photogrammetry. I'll have a link in the description and we're going to use that model to do light estimation on. And it'll show you how just by using a little bit of light estimation, it can make this scene seem a lot more in depth and it can kind of give a sense of presence more to the model just by using a few extra lines of code to enable light estimation. So we can see that the light estimation estimates ambient light and kind of surrounding light and not just point sources. And light estimation definitely helps the object not pop out so much. So if you just have a unnaturally lit scene, then it will end up looking like it's very bright or very dark in comparison to the environment. So there'll be a lot larger of a disconnect. Whereas if you have light estimation, it makes it a little bit more middle of the ground. And, and it is dynamic, but the dynamic part is probably not the reason why you'll want to use it. Because if there is dynamic lighting in a situation, then it will end up flickering a lot. And so even though it does still work, it's just not quite at the caliber that you might want for dynamic light. So currently this is only on Chromium type browsers. It is not on Safari or Firefox at all. So late estimation actually happens after some of the things that your phone does for image quality. So if your phone does some sort of like auto brightness or auto shadowing, like changing the light balance, then that actually changes the lighting of your scene. So it can be a little bit difficult to get something that looks natural if you have a scene or you're in an environment where the auto brightness is flickering a bunch or changing a bunch because of some sort of bright object or there's a window open. And so that's just something to consider is that, um, since we're already doing light estimation, it's actually quite easy to include shadows in that. So all we have to do is change a few flags in our code and it'll allow us to be able to emit shadows from our objects. And so that's a really nice bonus that we get for relatively cheap. It does cause more computational power. So, and that is something that as we increase the fidelity of our images and of our, our models, we'll end up having that problem because AR is an intensive process. And even with all the cores on our cell phone, you end up having to limit what you are doing. There's going to be a limit. And so we're going to try a bunch of things and eventually we're going to realize that you can't do everything yet. If you're curious about this particular example, there's someone um, called Ada Rose Cannon that seems to have done a lot of this stuff. And so that's like a really good search term to kind of look up if you're more curious about light estimation. They have a bunch of videos up about it and I think they are pretty entrenched with the actual development of this type of stuff. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, they, they're a very good resource to look into. This code is mostly a modified version off of the immersive web. So because the projects are getting a little bit more complicated, I'd like to start from another jumping off point from another project. So we're going to start with the photogrammetry project that we'd previously done. So I will have a quick, this is where it is. Um, and we're starting from this project. And basically what we're just going to be doing is quickly changing out the lights. So we have to enable the lights and add shadows to them. And then what we're going to do is uh, add a photo estimation to the features that we're requiring. And and we will include some extra things to when we set start the session. So we're going to request a light probe and then we're going to hook that light probe up. And the light probe is where most of the information that WebXR is giving us will come from. So this is mostly just trying to use this object in order to do the light estimation. So WebXR is doing all of it, all this work for us. Um, we're just having to hook up a little bit of extra code. So if the light probe is active, we're going to get an estimate from it. If that estimate is not blank, we'll do some extra things. So with the estimation, we are going to get out the spherical harmonics, and then we are going to set those on the light probe. Spherical harmonics are sort of similar to Fourier analysis in that you can kind of break down an arbitrary function on a sphere into a set of harmonics. And so they are very useful, and that's why this is going to be formed like a list of coefficients, and then you can actually use those with spherical harmonics to embed all that extra information. Uh, so it's a really nice way of summarizing a sphere function. And then after that, we write a function that gets our directional light and will create a directional light with the proper coloration. So this is not only estimating the brightness, it's also estimating what the color of the light is. And you are also able to do metallic reflections estimation, uh, but we don't have that here. But maybe that's something that we'll look into in the future as just kind of a little add on. Thanks for your time and have a good day. And I'll just leave you with an outro comparing the different uh, late estimation.